Okay, uh, what we've got here is a homemade inductance resistive load uh, burner. Um, there's a couple ways you can balance these batteries and I've made it just as simple as I could. And uh, I wanna show you here, it's a, it's a magnet. So what's going on here is we got positive and positive connected between the two battery banks, the larger battery array from the Chevy Volt DIY battery power wall. And this is about 33 kilowatts of power uh, divided between 16.5 battery, uh, 16.5 kilowatt battery packs. So, I mean, that's, that's what I have been told. I could be wrong about that, but what I've done is I made a coat hanger inductor, okay? Uh, now, there's a couple ways to make an inductor. You can make a, an iron coreless inductor, which creates a lot more heat. Or you can uh, make a uh, inductor with steel inside of it, which reduces the amount of heat, but sends the same amount of electrons through, if not more electrons through, because it doesn't get as hot. And it, it's obviously really hot. I mean, it's, it's uh, four volts, but uh, you can see it. It's toasty, you can see that. And uh, it appears that the resistance is switching over. It's, uh, the coil isn't insulated, okay? So it probably, isn't that great of an inductor. So let's see if we can take it out. Here. So now I took the iron core out of it and what I didn't, ju I just realized is there's no, ooh, that's nice and hot. There's no isolation from it. So now this is an ironless inductor. And it's also a, res a large resistive load. And if we look here, I can't tell if you can see that, I'm sorry. Let's see here. That'll probably improve because it'd be out of focus. We've got uh, 313, 318 uh, degrees. So it's super hot. A lot of energy going into this inductor. We're using it as a waste heat resistive load. It also makes a magnetic coil. When you put a screwdriver inside of there, you don't feel nothing, right? But it turns it into a magnet. Now this is magnetic tips, but it's not that great of magnetic tips. It's this on a magnetic tip. This one is not. So we'll put our screwdriver in the center and it turns into a magnet a screwdriver. So the more turns you get around a piece of iron that's isolated, obviously, from the electrical coil, then the more in, uh, inductance you're gonna get, which is a pretty good substantial amount, the bigger the piece of metal. The bigger the metal, the more you're gonna get out of it. So, there's also something else you could do. You could take a coil and wrap it around like that and short it, and it'd make an electrical current through it. Even having this close to it makes an electrical current as well. It's not very much, but just having it close to it would do that. It'd be considered one turn to how many ever turns this is. Well, we're not talking about transformers. Gosh, I keep talking. I love transformers. So, the Nikola Tesla, and, you know, designed the transformers. People, you got to appreciate it. So, what's going on here is the negative on this battery is connected to the negative on this battery. This battery is 41 volts. This battery is 45 volts. Probably, I don't know. We can test that immediately and find out. So. Here's the positive for our current battery. It's 45.5 volts. And 
This positive is connected to the positive on this battery with no inductance or resistance load between it. So this one is now, let's start on the screw. This is 42.7 volts. So the difference between the circuits is 2.6 volts. But we have 300 degrees coming out of this thing. The reason why that is because there's such an enormous capacity in this battery that we're just sending it in through this coil, heating the coil up, and then delivering the electrons on the other side to the opposite end. So we're discharging this battery and charging this battery at the same time. We're going to meet in the middle, and then I'll be able to connect this circuit, which is cold to the touch, to this circuit, which is cold to the touch. So uh, that way it'll balance the batteries out and then we can uh, hook it up again. Right now we're also charging through this big fat wire into this battery here. It's going in that battery from the circuit because that's the battery with the lowest uh, voltage with the uh, least amount of resistance in this circuit here. This has got the resistor on this circuit on this side but the ch charge controller is hooked up here and here and it goes in and it goes and charges that side so we're charging and discharging these batteries and it um, obviously there's a lot of power in there because uh, this is going to take a long time i mean i could sit here for about three hours and it probably still not be done maybe it will be i doubt it uh, but once it balances, it'll stay balanced as if it even charges all the way up. So I've got a lot of stuff to do today, and I'm going to get some other stuff done. I'm just talking about this video real quick. I'm also going to upload a video on wiring up this battery bank. I tried to get as much foot as I could. For some reason, my camera turns off. I have no idea why. I mean, it's plugged up it's, and everything. I don't know why it turns. It, it just quits recording it stays on but it quits recording i don't get it i'll have to look it up uh, but it's supposed to stay on for a long time so i'll have to call sony and maybe they'll fix it for me or something because i get tired of that but what we've got here is uh, uh basically an inductor coil and you know we're balancing the batteries with this simple circuit this used to be a coat hanger wrapped around a pipe and then we used uh clamps to clamp the circuits together and then we'll hook it up together whenever they're both the same voltage hello ladies and gentlemen thanks for watching all the way to the end of the video there's lots more content coming click the subscribe button below make sure you come back for more because there's great content always coming up every day in this channel see you next time peace